Hey guys, while I was in Tuscany, I actually bought a 12 year old whiskey. Oh, wow. Well, very and cool. His mom was furious. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. 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 How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, thank I you. I had a I had a great time, and I, I'm hoping that Dwayne's going to teach one of these things. Heck yeah. It's uh, codeinacastle.com. I was the first trainer. It's basically a traincation. Oh. So you're not only selling the, the developer, but the developer's partner, and the partners get to go, you know, travel around the town outside the castle uh, when we're in class, which is only four hours in the morning after breakfast. And so there's a lot of training, but there's also a lot of vacation, about 24 hours worth of training. And the rest of the time is like all planned and touristy wow. stuff and food Very and cool. wine and everything. So yeah, they want you, Dwayne. I'm in. I'm in. I can right. do it. We'll do it. Yes. So if anybody wants to hack from a castle, uh, <laughs> Carl up about details. The very first thing Dwayne will do is infiltrate the Wi-Fi. <laughs> that's that's not our first story. That's our second story. Oh, yeah. And we have a lot of stories because it's we been two weeks. So let's get yeah. to them. Let's do it. Okay, get cracking. Theme bleed. Yeah. Theme bleed. This is kind of cool. Um, so you know, we all know that obviously files have extensions, and those extensions are generally tied to some application associated with some application on your computer. Um, yeah. so whether it's a dot doc file, it mm-hmm. opens up word, a dot XLS file opens up Excel, so on and so forth. Um, most of you may or may not know that there is a dot theme file and the dot theme file. And it, it's actually fascinating being a security researcher going through all of the protocols that exist mm. inside of windows. It's, oh my God. I know there's a lot of them. It sounds like windows theme. It's crazy crazy um but there is a dot theme file and the, and the theme file is generally for windows themes right colors and that sort of stuff and and in general will not cause any issues other than just changing the theme of your computer right um, what could go wrong however yeah. i know right <laughs> um however a researcher so this was not exploited on the internet a researcher um gabe kirkpatrick uh, had discovered that you could actually use those dot theme files to gain remote code execution um, so hmm. let's say we download a theme over the web, double click on it because we think it's really cool. Um, it goes to do certain things, but then it can also run code, which it's it's designed not, it's not actually supposed to be able to do that. Um, so uh, Microsoft has released a patch for this. Uh, Gabe actually got paid $5,000 in a bug hmm. bounty for finding this, which is really good. Wow. Um, so all's well that ends well, but it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, usually things you download from the internet have what's called the mark of the web. Right. Um, so that when you go to run it, it's under special security context. Um, in this particular case, uh, Gabe said, Oh yeah, it's real easy to bypass. Just throw it in a cab file. And Hmm. then when they double click on it, it doesn't have the mark of the web anymore. So, um, but that, that should all be fixed. If you haven't patched your windows computer in a little while, maybe patch it. Um, if you're randomly downloading themes from the internet, uh, don't do that. How about don't don't? do that? How about about don't? (laughs) How about no? <laughs> mm. <laughs> big exactly. pile of no. Uh, that's big so that's, pile that of is eh. theme bleed. If you guys hear about Windows 11 being hackable, um, yeah, if you're downloading themes all the time from the internet, yeah, go patch. You know, that that died out with Windows 95 as far as I'm concerned. And good riddance to that. Wait, do you remember wind blinds? Anybody use wind blinds? Yeah. Back in like Windows 95, Windows XP, there weren't a lot of themes. And you could download a program over the internet called wind blinds. And it, it was a executable you'd run that would change the theme of your entire computer. Make it look like a Macintosh or make it look like whatever. It was awesome in the day. I remember a Monty Python theme. So I'd be sitting there and I, this is how I discovered it. I'm sitting next to my coworker and all of a sudden I hear, Albatross! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? He goes, oh, it's a Monty Python theme. Well, oh, turn that God. shit off. So I'd like awesome. to buy an argument. Uh, <laughs> no, you haven't. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right, next. Uh, more Microsoft, right? No, this is exploit steals passwords by tapping into keystrokes. Ah. <gasps> so we had a question um, from a viewer or listener, uh, who said, um, you know, you guys were talking about VPNs all the time. What VPN? Right. This this would make you want to get a VPN. And we mm. recommend OpenVPN. 
mm-hmm. because it comes, it's an open standard. It comes with a lot of equipment, firewall, firewalls, for example, right. ship with it, a lot of other routers. Uh, it's free. It takes a little more configuration. It's not as like drag and drop as, as others. Uh, so if you want something less technical, there's plenty of commercial VPNs out there. There's, I, I think there's one called Surf VPN. There's, there's Nor, uh, Northern V, North VPN or Norton VPN. There's all sorts of them out there. I use OpenVPN. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we use OpenVPN. It's, it's typically, if you're technical, you typically don't mind a little bit of the detail. You can do that. But, but why would you want a VPN? Well, here's a good example. Mm. So, uh, exploit, and I'm surprised we're even hearing about this because it was developed in China. Mm-hmm. Uh, at a university, but Singapore had a hand in it. So I think they leaked it to, to the world. Okay. It's called Wiki Eve. It's the first Wi-Fi based hack free keystroke eavesdropping system. So let's say you're at a, um, you're at a Starbucks or a, Mic- Microsoft, a McDonald's or someplace like that has free Wi-Fi. I can listen in to the traffic that you're sending to the router. And there's this standard that helps the router get its data called BFI. And that, that, standard is not encrypted between you and the router and so <gasps> oh my using my. Y- using some um sleuthing and ai you know handiwork they've got an 88.9 percent inference accuracy for the keystrokes you're typing which means when you're typing in a password they can discern the password more almost 90 percent of the time wow this is awesome this the is a really o- cool attack the only awesome. way to stop sure, this Dwayne. is to not be on public Wi-Fi's, that would be mm-hmm. one way, or to use a VPN and use it correctly. I, you know, I think staying off public Wi-Fi is a good first. It's first so point. hard. It's so inconvenient because, like, you're at an airport. Mm. Airport free Wi-Fi. Do you want to connect? Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm, if it's no. free, then you're the product. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. It, I I love the style of attacks, though. Um, a side channel <laughs> of attack. Of course you do. Of course <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's so cool. But the a side channel attack is, you know, lots of people think about, okay, there's this pipe of data going, I need to get into the pipe and decrypt it um, to figure out what's going on. And side channel attacks are what's happening else in the environment in the system right. that can infer what the data is inside that pipe without having to decrypt mm-hmm. it. So these are really cool. Yeah. And the beam, uh, beam form feedback information, the BFI, mm-hmm. um, that's usually, uh, interestingly enough, that's, that's usually just used for like accurate location. Mm-hmm. And we started to see this advertised probably about uh, six years ago on routers. You'd see like your TP link or your night or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it would say, you know, with, um, they would say with, with extra um, hacking. <laughs> no, no, right? With a side of hacking. No, it would say, um, you know, the router has active ability to locate a mobile device more accurately and then feed more power to those antennas so that it gets a better connection. Um, you're like, oh, that sounds really cool. Let's do that. Um, not realizing the ramifications might be. This mm. is this is actually really kind of cool. So as a, as a neutral observer, Carl, does Wayne sound as crazy when he likes these hacks as I do when I say I like tanks? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. You it, guys are equally crazy okay. in a different direction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think. It. Yeah. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing I love is a good steak and some electric guitar. You know. Heck yeah. Um, nice cruise I mean, missile. That's not bad. No. Nice. <laughs> and a good exploit on the side. And then we're all happy. Exploiting and cruise like, missiles. That's like our castle, sweet spot. I like castles in Tuscany too. Those are <laughs> pretty go. awesome. Yeah. Yes, you're both crazy. And that's why people listen to this show. <laughs> so, but we got to answer a listener question. We with did that story. So, the, yeah. the two boards. So, what else could go wrong? Well, what if a what if a researcher found thirty eight terabytes of Azure data <laughs> oh, that was nice. unsecured, that's right, dude? Oh. Um, <laughs> well, well thirty eight terabytes of private data. It, it, okay, leaked. But it's, it's AI Ugh. learning models, which isn't great, but it's wait, not wait, like it was wait, user. Hold on. It's AI learning models. Yeah. What do you think the AI is learning on? Well, usually how it's interacting with people. And yeah. I'm I know personally if anybody knew what I asked the AIs, there it would there would be a reckoning. But you know what this enables? If somebody got a hold of this, they could do their own sort of chat GPT clone and make it evil, you know, take off the guardrails. I I mean I think you'd need more than thirty eight I mean, that's like having one row in a database. Right, it's, right. it's, it's, it's significant. <laughs> it's and, a but good the other start. thing is we don't, we don't know if anybody evil got it because Dwayne right. didn't get it. I, <laughs> didn't he? Mm. How do you know? Mm. Uh, Strokes the beard. Uh, mm. Let me pull Strokes out the hairless cat. cat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, all right. So, so it's bad, but it probably isn't that bad. Is that I what we're know, saying? Yeah, I want to know though. Let's just flip this a little bit. Security <laughs> researcher finds thirty-eight terabytes of data. Who's the security researcher who's mm. out there going? You know what I'm going to do today? I'm just going to scan Azure all the time and see if something new pops up. You know what? That's what hackers do, though. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Dwayne. Uh, so if you announce it, you're a security researcher. And if you take it, you're a hacker. I got it now. I understand. I get it. That's oh, okay. All right. <laughs> We're all hackers at heart. Are you going to be a is. voluntary police, a, a volunteer <laughs> police officer, too, and pull people over? <laughs> I might be. I might be. Uh, all right. Should we move on to GitLab? Let's do Please. it. There's obviously nothing we can do about people stealing terabytes of data in Azure. Just tell no. Microsoft about it. They'll fix it. I'm sure they fixed it already. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah they deleted it relatively quickly. It wasn't out there that long. <sighs> um, so thanks to the security researcher who reported those issues. Um, yes. You know, these things happen. So critical vulnerability found in GitLab. And and- GitLab, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like GitHub, but it's different. It's uh, it does the same kind of thing. It's a, it's a place for repositories of code, yeah. and uh, places where you can f- launch uh, cloud processes from when you check your code in and all that stuff. It's not a good. It's not a good exploit. It's a nine point six vs v- CVSS score. Oh man! It was Ooh. patched on the eighteenth of September. It's expected that thirty million users are affected. Wow. And it's a it's a uh, remote code execution. It hasn't mm-hmm. been exploited in the wild as far as we know, but you need to update from the versions that you're on to 16.2.7 or 16.3.4 to get okay. the fix. And and if a, a hacker gets in there, they can modify source code, gain remote control execution, impersonate, uh, and All definitely get sensitive stuff. information. Not, none of it's good. Ah. Yeah, it's neat. <laughs> At least it was patched. Love- yeah. <laughs> Dwayne's like, that's cute. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, that's adorable. Look at that. Adorable. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's funny how Patrick's like, oh, and I'm like, oh, that's really kind of cute. That's cute. Oh, look at him. Uh, no, so it's, yeah, I look at exploits like puppies. I'm like, oh, that's oh, it adorable. has my eyes. Aww. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him tear apart that code. So, um, yeah, this one's, this one's neat because inside GitLab, um, you have these automated scanners that can do things like you know, scan for vulnerabilities in code and that sort of thing. Same thing we right. see in GitHub. Yeah. Um, and it, they used to run under a context that I think was assumed to be unbreachable, right? Had permissions Ooh. to do all sorts of stuff. Um, and, and the, the, the crux of the problem here is, uh, you can manipulate those pipelines to run right. code for you, which means you can gain access to whatever you want. So yeah. think, think like privesque. Okay. Privilege escalation for those yes, ah. keeping score. So one of my <laughs> f- favorite topics. China? China. So we have two <gasps> stories about China. Oh. And neither one of them is a, is a good look. Um, so at this point, it doesn't matter, but go ahead. One of the things that's going on with China is, and I'm, I'm probably never going to travel there again. Um, their economy is fairly well collapsing. Um, if you mm. look at the bond market for properties, um, two years ago, only 10% of their bonds were in trouble and now 90% are in trouble, according to the latest statistics. So there, there's going to be some real big economic uh, problems over there. But they still are doing their best job to be dangerous to the rest of us. And mm-hmm. so they have a demand to tech firms that they have to reveal hackable flaws in their products. Right yeah. now, if you want, if you if you if you play the moon, you know, moon died calf, and say, well, of course they want to know. I'm sorry, if they're going to use their I'm product sorry, whether it's say? vulnerable. The moon died calf moon, is that like a moon died calf colloquialism? Yeah. Of Something some from sort? the 30s. <laughs> it's from the 30s. You wouldn't recommend. You wouldn't remember. Even, what the what the heck is the moon died calf? Moon eyed. Oh, moon eyed calf. Moon eyed calf. Well, there you go, kids. Well, that's, no, you. that's you're kind of burying term, the lead that's here. A term for you old people. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. I apologize. I just so, wanted to make sure I understood this story. Continue. So, China <laughs> is basically saying, oh, software company that operates on our soil, tell us how your software may be hacked because we're just curious. We mm-hmm. wouldn't use it for any. And don't tell anybody else. And don't tell anybody else. Yeah, you said something about <laughs> oh, yeah. somebody got in trouble for posting. There was there there was a security firm, not a security firm. A no, it was it was a security research firm 
uh, in China that found this zero day that was like super damaging. And they did what they were supposed to. They disclosed it to the software company that they found it in. And then they reported it to the CV, CV, uh, e systems that it would get reported and whatnot. And China came to them and went, what you're are under you arrest. Doing? Like what? <laughs> it reminds that was me wrong. of, it reminds me yeah. of that comedian, the late comedian John Panette, who was like mm. 500 pounds. And he would do a bit about going up to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet, and the owner comes out, greets him at the door, and says, we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> Sign says open, grand opening. <laughs> no, we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so basically, this is a, one of many reasons that a lot of Western firms um, are getting out and uh, abandoning mm-hmm. their, their, mm-hmm. their, their... And the next story is really... A, a connection to this so th- that's bad yeah, it's a supplication uh, it, here so let's yeah. talk let's go into that one Dwayne. you want to talk about the uh the cisco packets uh you talking about the magic packets magic. yes magic packets magic, magic packets magic packets I yeah, this one's take those um, in college <laughs> listen kids uh don't do drugs stay away from the so, magic packets yeah this is this one's this one's actually really cool too so a lot of people don't think of firmware Right. We talk a lot about hardware computers right. and we talk a lot about software, you know, bits and bytes that are on the computer. Mm. But in between hard and soft is firm. Um, firmware. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, I didn't. Right. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. It's it's the it's closer to hardware than software is, but it's huh. closer to software than hardware is. And mm-hmm. that's why it's firm. So I get my it's eggs like I get my computers, basically. It's <laughs> like a hard cheese. <laughs> not quite a brie or a gouda thank you patrick for relating yeah. it to cheese um it, it follows with my moon it's theme like my a, cow oh my yeah. i'm in a dairy mood <laughs> but just don't dip it in olive oil okay right right so needless to say firmware <laughs> guys firmware is the code that runs on the chips inside of like iot Ooh. devices right. firewalls that sort of stuff uh, Tostitos chips or other chips? Yes, yes. Put the <laughs> cheese on the in, chips. It's also in everything electronic that it yeah. has a computer in it, including absolutely. Like it's the operating system, and refrigerators, it's the operating system of something that doesn't have a traditional Wi-Fi yeah, routers. System. Most yeah. integrated circuits. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of things that you can run uh, that that run firmware. I mean, for example, so uh, usually routers and firewalls um, they don't have. Linux, although it's a Linux-like operating system, is usually called Squash FS. So there's there is a small little f- operating system that runs on a firewall. Um, mm. Looks like Linux. Um, uses BusyBox. We could go into all sorts of things and of for reverse fun, engineering, which we Dwayne won't. will take apart these devices <laughs> and will. check for <laughs> vulnerabilities. <laughs> yes, yeah. If you ever see a picture of my office, that behind me is my reverse engineering station. Uh, so send powered. your devices yeah. to He's Dwayne Laflot. Do it. At, in, yeah. He's I not a bomb maker. He's just a virus maker. And yes. include five dollars <laughs> for bombs. his troubles. <laughs> <laughs> five dollars, and I'll and forget a, your address. Yeah. A, a small nip of M's. scotch. Just send me a small nip of scotch. Yeah. So, and I'll work on hardware. Twelve so needless year old to say, scotch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, um, what happened here is the. Um, Chinese actors um, who have subsidiaries that exist in China. So let's say, for example, we're, you know, Carl, uh, Patrick, and Dwayne, we started a company called uh, CPD. Okay. Sounds like a disease. Oh, that's CPD. Yeah. Yeah, it's very anyways, close to a disease. <laughs> we, we created <laughs> one, a company called one CPD. Letter and you've got a disease. Right. <laughs> and we do, Just and we, we sell L. widgets. And we decided that what we were going to do is we were going to open up. A, a factory in China. Okay. Um, what would happen is because we now have either a subsidiary in China or we have a, an office in China, um, actors there would get access to the facility and then mm-hmm. they would break into our IoT devices, uh, mm-hmm. router switches, uh, cameras, whatever. And what's, you know, that happens. What's sneaky about this though is then the firmware that runs that device, they would install a new firmware that has a back door that they can connect to at any time they want and run commands. The funny thing about firmware is that you can create firmware installers that can write to these things if oh, you yeah. have all the right magic yeah. magic packets. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So what's interesting is then they'll put this firmware on the device and then every time you go to the device, you know how we always recommend go up to the device, go up to your update your device, go to your firwall mm-hmm. and update your mm-hmm. firewall. Mm-hmm. When you go to that firewall and you click update, 
this little piece of firmware in there goes, oh, you're already up to date. You're good. Yeah, good job. You're You're fine. Good for you. Let me move the hard drive around a little bit first. So now they continue to to stay and have access access to those devices. Yeah, this is uh, is sneaky, but it's good. Read and write a megabyte at a time. Mm -hmm. Just turn the disk. Uh, So what do you do if this happens? Uh, Well, first thing you do is... Uh, yeah, there. Most of these devices have a uh, uh, self-destruct I, switch. They do, but yeah, but it's <laughs> it's more like there's a a, a read only memory area, the okay. ROM, if you will, mm-hmm. um, that holds the original BIOS usually for a device. So let's say you like completely torched a device. There's usually a sequence of like buttons you can hold while you power the device off and power it back on, and it loads the original firmware. Factory from the reset. Yeah, factory reset. Absolutely. Yeah. And it pulls that firmware from the factory and, and it'll overwrite anything that's on the device. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. what's there. It just cooks what's over there and then puts the original factory settings on there. And then you so can go you, to the last firmware that worked that's exactly. safe. Exactly. And install yep. that. And either tell it to update on its own or download it officially from the website and make mm. sure you put your router up. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you do have companies and or subsidiaries that are, are in China and you believe you are a part of some of these device issues, mm. uh, yeah, you want to probably reset those. And the rest of the network too. So let's take a quick break. I know it's a little late for a break, but we're going to do that anyway. We'll be right back with more security this week. And you're not going to believe the state of NFTs coming right up. And we're back. You're listening to Security This Week. I'm Carl Franklin. That's Dwayne and Pat. And, uh, you know, seldom do I read a headline that just, uh, I have to do a double take because, all right, so Sony was hacked by a ransomware group, but not just Sony, Sony. quote, all of Sony systems. All of it. All All of of it. it. And what what I love, what I love about this story is they say, like, this is a ransomware group. So that's what they do, ransomware. And what's the first thing they do? They say, listen, we've compromised everything, like all of it, like everything. Right. And we're not going to ransomware it. Yeah, well, that's weird. That's kind of what you do. And they say, no, 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 we're not going to do it because we know Sony doesn't pay for ransom. Right. So we're just going to steal data and sell it to other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Patrick's always like, don't pay, don't pay. Yeah, right. Well, hey, if your strat wait, if your strategy is don't pay, you should also probably have a strategy of securing your stuff. That's true. <laughs> because and, and well, there are other ways to be honest strategy with you, of paying. Yep. If you have a strategy of not paying, <laughs> you're far more likely to have a strategy of protecting your stuff. Uh, you like Sony, right? If you're climbing, uh, if you're mountain climbing, and you're cli- and you're tied in with a rope, you're probably not nearly as careful as if you're not tied in with a rope. Right. Right. So you would hope. Work without a net. You would hope that you take more care, but unfortunately, like... You don't go have dinner at the Four Seasons, and then the waiter comes to the bill, and you say, I'm not paying, and (laughs) try to walk out. (laughs) Go ahead. Try that. See how that works out. See how that works out for you. So we'll see what happens with this. Um, They say they have 6,000 files, which I don't know who's calling that a bevy of data. That's uh, Kotaku.com, but... All of Sony can come down to 6,000 files. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's like what's weird is it's like well, a smattering of java files and, well, and most of them are logs. theme files i think <laughs> <Themes. Exactly. laughs> and they're like we're gonna sell it and sony's probably like whatever take it albatross <laughs> you know, not my desktop.ini yeah Ooh, it's all yours not the desktop.ini oh, 6000 desktop.ini files i can't, uh, I can't have the uh, mgm knowing what our layout of icons is that's that's unforgivable so it's so unacceptable. so can, practically speaking all of sony hit by ransomware does that that doesn't mean any sony products that i own are going to stop working no. no none of this makes this none of this makes any sense like they say we hit all of sony and we only have 6000 files like i guarantee you people that you've forgotten more than 6000 files i mean 6000 files is nothing <laughs> right it's well, so it's right. like that's like part of one part of a directory of a computer yeah. Of one computer, like it's like your Windows I wonder, folder. I wonder yeah. if they just they just yeah, hacked some guy more named in your Sony. Windows folder. Some guy <laughs> like Mister Sony down the street, and they got, got all, all of his, his files. <laughs> Mister Sony, and like, we've got all of Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're gonna get all of Smith. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what, Carl? 
Uh, I just did a real quick, just a real quick right click on the Windows directory and properties, and it's already yeah. at uh, seventy five thousand files. Okay, well, just to give you, you feel for like just okay, six thousand files is absolutely nothing. All of Sony <laughs> fits in six six. All right, so files. clearly they're exaggerating because they well, want to make could some it be money. Six thousand yeah. billion files or something. <laughs> they just left off a number. I I don't maybe <laughs> even. I have, I have no idea. It seems like a silly. We'll probably hear more about this as it goes on. But right now, right. apparently all of Sony is 6,000 files and you could fit it on a thumb drive. You could fit it on a three and a half inch floppy. You know what I want to hear right now? A What's feel that? good story. Do we Who have doesn't? a feel good story? We do have a feel good story. How? Where? What is it? <laughs> how, how? How? Where? where what, what is it? What is it? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it comes everything, good. doesn't it? Right, right. How where it covers what is it? all of stories? Uh, which one were we going to? Oh, that's the secure our world. Oh, yeah. I like this. I actually really like this. I don't know if you guys follow Jen Easterly. Um, she's awesome, mm-hmm. by the way. She's the head of CISA. Um, she's the head of CISA, which is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. But you know, honestly, she is doing a fantastic job at trying to reach out to, to organizations and reach out to people who want to be in the cyber field. And like, she's she's doing a great job of the mm. PR of, of CISA and getting them involved in helping protect things. Um, what's neat is this is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and in that, what CISA's done is they've released this thing called Secure Our World. Mm. And, and I looked at it and I was like, you know what? Listen, I, I'm all about training users and businesses and, and teaching them how to be secure. Yeah. And when I, when I look at these little quick hit things, I'm always like, eh. Like that was kind of kind of not worth the visit. This one yeah. is. This is really good. If you go to cissa.gov slash secure dash r dash world, and and Carl will post this. We'll have yeah, that. It's also on the that page. On the website. There's very simple things to click on at the bottom. It says learn what you can do securing yourself and your family, securing your business, or mm-hmm. securing your products. And they literally break it down to an, into an infographic of what will make you 95% more secure. That's so cool. When interacting on the internet. So I'm, I'm actually really excited about this. Do you think Grandma Franklin would be able to read this and understand it, though? Heck yeah. You do? I think she would. I think she would. Yeah. It okay. honestly, it, it, it all dis- distills down to, they have a video on there, but it all distills down to like, how would you identify phishing? And, and they walk you mm. through that process or, Hey, why is a strong password important? Or what is multi-factor right. authentication? How do I turn it on? Um, so it's, it's actually, it's a fantastic little guide. I would highly recommend, um, that people go visit it and, and use it in their day to day life or business. Cool. So I'm excited. Hang on a second. I'm I'm sending an email to my mother right now <laughs> with a link, <laughs> and I'm just gonna call it "Click Here." Is that a good subject? Oh my god! Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That, yeah. that is that's fantastic. That'll work. That'll work. You're not training her for the wrong thing at all. I know. If <laughs> yeah, she exactly. calls you though and says, "Did you just send me this link?" You be like, "You know what? You pass." Oh, she gets a gold star. She does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before we get to the NFT clickbait, let's talk about Google. Google has had some zero days in the in the last months. They have, have they not? Yes, like an unusual amount of zero days in Chrome. Yeah, and that's I mean it's to, it's par for the course. Honestly, um, the Chrome browser is one of the most used browsers on the planet. It's going to be a the target. most used. Yeah. yeah. Um, which you don't use the Mozilla, no, whatever. But anyways, so um, Chrome is used by almost everybody. Um, and then Chromium, which is a spinoff, has, is also used by almost everybody. So there's there's a lot of target, sort of there's this target painted on Chrome. And yeah, there's a lot of zero days. What I think is awesome about this story is first, um, the CVE 2023-5217 um, was an exploit, was a, a heap buffer overflow which we'll mm. talk about it. And it's it's actually relatively, looks relatively esoteric. It's the VP8 encoding of the open source libvpx video codec library. Like there's wow. this like really esoteric Wait piece video Wasn't this codec. the same exploit that Apple got hit with? Didn't uh, they, run, they run this down to the same library as an Apple possible. exploit? Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right. Yeah. So it's mm. a, what's interesting about this is the response time. Like Google came back They're fast. and yeah. and patched this within two days. Wow. Like that's awesome. Most companies like when you when when you as a security researcher tell a company that that there's an issue with their software, they get that they usually get ninety about. days. 
Yeah. yeah. They usually get fairly defensive. They do. Well, they, yeah, they get defensive. Mm-hmm. They yell at you and they threaten with lawyers. Then next week they call you back and they apologize and they say, listen, can you work with us? And then they don't call you till the third week and say, yeah, let's sit down and see what it is. And then the week after the developers call you and go, yeah, we still don't understand it. So you're already mm-hmm. a month in. Mm-hmm. With Google, it was reported to them and they said, yep, done, fixed, patch. Like, that's awesome. That's oh, really these good. Guys, these guys are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it, right. it it definitely rebolsters my trust for the the Google. I mean, the Google tag team is amazing. Their threat analyti- analysis group is awesome. And 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 if you're sitting on your um, computer right now using Chrome, mm. look in the upper right hand corner, and if you see a little update button, a little red update button, you want to click that right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll talk to you later. If you get an email from me, do you want to click on that right away? <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, Don't do it right now because your podcast will go away. But then after that, yeah, click on it. Yeah. And I think all you really have to do is close Chrome and open it again. And that's all it's doing. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Yeah, so good. I'm thinking about <laughs> buying some NFTs. What do you think? NFT stands for what? No, no effing, fungible no, token. No fungible <laughs> tangible. Uh, well, any worth. Um, uh, so here it is. It's an article in Rolling Stone. Your NFTs are actually, finally, totally worthless. <laughs> <laughs> NFTs were a craze that uh, people were, and it was told to me that people would buy uh, or sell digital things that can be um, proven to be unique in the world, right? I never and so I, that, i'm gonna it, admit this i never understood nfts because here's why carl buys this goofy monkey nft and like everybody on the planet what's that like a picture of a, like monkey. a picture and everybody on the planet can use that picture right but but carl owns it but it belongs to carl but i own it right and and what's more i have a blockchain entry or something that proves that i own it that i am the first person to own yes. it and therefore yeah. i own it but it's completely it's digital and therefore it's yeah. freely copyable and downloadable. And 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 unless you have super deep pockets and plan on taking everybody to court because you own it, it seems like a really useless so way to spend what, your money. What they were hoping for, here's the thing. What they were hoping for. Who are they? If, the crypto bros? The, the yeah. Crypto and the bros. people who they they convinced that this was <laughs> and, like a and thing. some of them actually bought these things. Oh heck yeah, for a lot, for of, a money. lot of money. So it most, did a little work at the them, beginning. Most of them were bought by those people. So right, let's say I um a Michelangelo, Ooh. a modern day Michelangelo, and I'm gonna no paint this. no no no. You need a better metaphor than that. You make guns. There you go. <laughs> no, you no, don't make. He's guns. a modern you day make, Smith and Wesson. You make pictures of guns <laughs> no but but like think about the, the you draw picture. tanks think about the picture of the two hands in the sistine ta- chapel about to touch <laughs> yes right god god and adam if yeah. you had that as an nft donald trump and the no Pope. one could use it without your permission yeah right so it's digital rights management is really mm. what they were going for mm-hmm. the problem that's, is no one wants to use your damn monkey that's right because it's <laughs> not really that valuable right the only ones that shot up in value though were the like a lot of the first ones ever sold because they were like, oh my god, this is right. the first one. It's you, it's unique because like the it's the first, first one. Beanie babies, it. it's, yeah. it's the, the first same kind of thing, right? Yeah. So, um, I have that if you want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the pet rock me, made a hundred thousand dollars. I thought huh. it made more than that. No, that was only like a hundred grand. It was such a flash in the pan. Yeah, it was just yep, yeah, my pet rock. Um, yeah. so. You know, the idea was valid if you produced real, like, valuable things. If you produced a poem, you could NFT it. Mm-hmm. And then someone could own that poem and give it to their their spouse and say, I bought and this. You could sell it again this. and resell it. It just didn't catch on for the purpose. What happened instead is celebrities and people with too much money, celebrities, um, ended up buying them as vanity projects. And they got bored. And it just didn't catch on. It didn't become digital rights management for mm-hmm. art or other things but there is also no way to enforce it right right unless you go to a court of law and say listen these these nf that's my nft that that person is like but but we do that with copyright already no i get that but if well that's true right absolutely the purpose is the purpose wasn't to keep people from copying digital things the purpose of nfts was to prove that you have the original and therefore it has some value that somebody else will pay for down the road right but the fact is that digital things 
are free. Yes. For the most part. So imagine, if you will, like Patrick owns the Mona Lisa, the actual Mona Lisa. The actual Mona Lisa. All of us can take pictures of it and all of us can circulate it around and all of us can put information on the internet about I didn't it. Say we can that make that news articles about it. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm just saying we could, right? But you still own the original and it has value. Yeah. Right. The problem here is the original is the same thing as all the rest of them, right? Yep. The, yeah. they're, they're all digital. So the digital copy, number one, is the same thing as the original, whereas your Mona Lisa wouldn't be the same thing. My next album that I'm working on here uh, starting in the winter is going to come out only on vinyl. Oh, and good. I'm going to do a Kickstarter Sweet. for it. And it's going to be like old school double album packed with uh you know liner notes and and nice. pictures and stuff and it's not going to be cheap okay. love it cool yeah I, I i have a nephew who's totally into vinyl has all sorts of great old vinyl yeah um yeah Amazing. i've been into vinyl since i was three nope nope wait two <laughs> <laughs> all right we got to get out of here patrick's got something to do so yes yeah and we're done thanks everybody yeah thank you yeah that was fun and we'll see you next time next week i imagine week. on yes, security uh, this week bye-bye uh, yep.